I can see everyone. Well, oh, good. Profile okay. picture. Except for Rach and Justin. Yeah. Well, it's okay. I, I didn't do my hair today, so. <laughs> <laughs> Join the rest of the crew. <laughs> Pajama convo. Yeah, well, if you'd like, I can I can use a little bit of a uh, dry shampoo and get my flowing locks going. <laughs> you can pass some of that down to me. I could use some of that. <laughs> aliens. Hello? Ah, hey. she's here. You there? there? And so are the aliens. <laughs> what? Aliens. <laughs> no, they're okay. They're okay. <laughs> we are. Uh, sometimes the aliens visit us. <laughs> <laughs> Look out for aliens. You'll hear no. them before you see no. them. Yeah, you like their presence known. So far, <laughs> so far, you sound good. So I think that's we're headed in the right direction. Do you still have your mini ears on? Because I can't see anything. Um, I do. Yeah, I'm still wearing them. Okay. <laughs> I just yeah. Yeah, you gotta look out for those aliens. What are they gonna do? Yeah, you know, I am gonna use some dry shampoo. My hair is bugging the shit out of me. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff is the truth, by the way. What is it? Living proof. Uh, living proof. Perfect hair day, PhD. Ooh. <laughs> nice. So good. So expensive, but so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel so much better. <laughs> that is the sound of freshness, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> if only y'all could smell me right now. I smell fantastic. Janine and Rachel are going to have to confirm when they, when they see you at ECC. Yes, I smell like... A winter's breeze. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that a winter breeze had a specific smell. I'll have to take a sniff when I go outside next time. <laughs> on a snow day, Jams. <laughs> yeah, we haven't gotten any snow since October. We haven't either. And it's been a very long time since we had snow in Vancouver. More than a year. Yep. Yeah, we don't have any snow here either. Looking out the window, there's no snow. Like every year. Do y'all ever get a white Christmas? Once. Not really. Years ago. <laughs> years ago. And it wasn't just any old white Christmas, it was a white Christmas. Now, f*** you, we're gonna bury your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Mind you, I was much shorter back then, so it might have not been that much snow. <laughs> That's true. Seems like how, a lot, though. how tall are you, Rach? I am... Four foot eleven and three quarters, so five feet on a good day. Oh, that is adorable. <laughs> she is the cutest thing ever, you just don't know. Yeah, you can't <laughs> see it right now, but she's wearing Minnie Mouse ears right now. I saw it earlier. <laughs> it was adorable. I try really hard. <laughs> my partner on the website, she's really tiny, too. She's like four foot nine. Aww. Oh my gosh, so much shorter than me. <laughs> I know. You guys should stand next to each other and you can feel tall for once. So. It's you can feel tall. I always thought that I was like super short and then I would meet up with friends and I'd be wearing heels and I'm like, I'm not that short. <laughs> perspective. All perspective. Yeah, like I always thought my friends were so much taller. I There's a, my, my other cousin, we talk about it all the time because I always told all my friends when I was maybe eight or nine that my cousin was seven feet tall, because that's what I thought she was. She's like 5'5", five five. but at the time, I was like, yeah, she's like so tall. She's like seven feet tall. Yeah, it's a big difference between seven foot and 5'5". Five five. Yeah. It's all about perspective. Perspective. Yes. I guess okay. there's no agenda. Yeah, no, not really. It's it's pretty flea, free, flea. Flea. free flowing. Okay. <laughs> the <start. laughs> You know, if you let the fleas bite you, the you know the aliens win. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it should I be a the shirt. Is that, that, oh. Ew, what, what was that? that? <laughs> the clip that you sent me sounded like the apocalypse was coming. <laughs> um, I seriously can't see anything. That sounded really. He's bad. putting lotion on his hands. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> It puts the lotion on its skin. Oh no, the internet's. The internet's? Being weird. Those darn internets. It's a series of two. Okay. The internet's not weird anymore. James, are we already going? Have we been Yeah, going? we've been recording for a oh, while. Okay. 
Okay, this could be the extra. This could be the extra stuff then. Extra content. Yeah. Extra content. Weird sounds. Aliens. And brought to you by Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Dry Shampoo. <laughs> when you want to smell like a winter's breeze, it's a summer store. We need to get on the Living Proof PhD Dry Shampoo. You may not look like Jennifer Aniston, but it'll damn well make you feel like Jennifer Aniston. And scene. <laughs> they need to send you free products for for for. They should send me free products. products. I can stop buying this shit. It's expensive. <laughs> All right, James. Do you want to do like a formal intro, even though we're already going? Sure. What the heck? And they can move it around to the beginning, so it sounds like we know what we're doing. Yeah. I I never do that. I just kind of leave it. <laughs> yeah, it just it can be in the middle. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, welcome to another Nerds Are Us, our non-podcast podcast. I am joined today by all of the ladies from NC. Say hi, ladies! Oh, hello, ladies! And we are joined today by Justin Prince from Lifted Geek. Say hello, Justin. Hello, Justin. Yay, everybody does that, Yay. and I love it! <laughs> Follow instructions very well. Yes. I try. I think that's becoming, like, a test now. Like, all the nice gents that we have that we speak to and we say, hi, so-and-so, they always repeat just as told. So, that just means good dudes. We're conditioned by the world. We're well-trained. We go through a NC boot camp. Yeah, there you go. It's the aliens. <laughs> they really crack that whip. Do. Uh, yeah. Kinky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we always have one foot in the gutter. <laughs> yep. It's one funny, foot. I got, nice I got like coming. one hair out the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> My ass has been in the gutter for. Here. I don't know. Right. I said at least one foot in the gutter. <laughs> the at least, yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes you have to come out for sunshine and then you just crawl back in. What is this yeah. sunshine you speak of? It sounds very <laughs> mythical. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Probably in Vancouver that is the case. <laughs> Only Not during much winter. different in Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> Seattle is like Vancouver, except, you know, dirtier and... Uh, American. In American. American. American, yeah. <laughs> Seattle is like American Vancouver. Yes. There you go. Geography lesson, guys. Geography lesson. <laughs> <laughs> So Janine and I were lucky enough to meet Justin this summer at yeah. when we were leaving San Diego to go back to normal life, breaking out of the, the uh, nerd air of Comic-Con. And um, we ran into him at the airport and Janine was brave enough to go up to him and hand him one of our Nerdy Curious cards and sparked up a conversation, and uh, he's been a wonderful, supportive friend to have. And um, as we've you know ventured on our little journey, he's been gracious, giving us advice and just being awesome. So we wanted to invite him on and have him share a little bit about himself and his website and all of his nerdiness. And, um, and yeah, because we thought everyone needs to know Justin, because he's awesome. You got, all, you got enough time for that? Because if it's all my nerdiness, then <laughs> we might need to make this a trilogy or something. Yeah, for sure. We, we can, we're inviting one. you back. You can just, you can just live here. <laughs> Episode one, the birth of Justin Prince. <laughs> Episode two, it's my empire strikes back. I find out someone's my father. <laughs> Episode 3, it wasn't actually in the book, but we decided to make a movie out of it anyways. <laughs> and then we do the prequels of Judge Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rolling text, we should put that on the thing. Rolling text going up the thing yeah. with the thing. It just says Justin Prince over and over again, because yeah. no one reads a rolling text. <laughs> <laughs> subliminal messaging, alright. <laughs> We've Lots got of subliminal, subliminal messaging. messaging. <laughs> So what's up, all the nerdy curious people out there that check out the unpodcasty podcast of podcast goodness? <laughs> I am your geeky denizen of all that is great and good, Justin Prince. And I guess they wanted me to talk a little bit about myself and tell you my story. Mm -hmm. Well, it started back in 1982 when 
I was born. Um, that's not that exciting because, you know, I just came into life. But it's spelled the absolute moment that the world will realize that a Justin Prince exists and it is... <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing that is part of the story, but not quite the whole story of stories. I'm random as hell. Uh, super random. That's what I love about you. I am everything that is random. <laughs> I might just interject random shit here and there, but aside from being as random as I am and saying random over and over again in random various ways. I am one of the heads of LiftedGeek.com. We are a geek-centric lifestyle blog. We organize our website like a magazine. I have coined the phrase blogazine when you talk about us because we don't want to be like every other blog out there that's like, post, 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 post. Guess what I did? Guess what I found? Guess who I saw? Yeah. We could do that, but every other blog out there is like that. So I was looking at... at other publications and other forms of media and how they organize their content and we wanted to organize ours like a magazine mm -hmm. because I like magazines just without the ads and you know David Beckham's bum all over some kind of random ad <laughs> well, yeah, that'd be, I like those if I could somehow get David Beckham's ass as like an endorsement I don't need all of David Beckham just his ass can you He's imagine ass. how much our web traffic would go up yeah dude mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just like you know butts you, you need the butt and abs and abs the butts. abs wouldn't hurt Come on, to you. Come on, to you'll get a lot of traffic. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because if we're going to exploit anything, it's going to be some dude's ass. Yes. <laughs> Hiddle cakes. <gasps> Hiddle cakes. Yes. <laughs> but actually, the the San Diego Comic Con story is kind of a fun thing because um, Lucid Geek was born at San Diego Comic Con. Yep. Not back in 1982, like I was born, but back <laughs> in 2000. 12, I think it was, or 2011. I can't remember exactly which one it was. I go to so many of these freaking things. But um, I was with my partner. She goes by Riri. She is tiny and adorable and is four foot nine and cosplays a bunch of things. And uh, we were at the panel for Nerdist and Geek and Sundry. This was while Nerdist was already uh, pretty big because Chris Hardwick is Chris Hardwick. And um, when you take Will Wheaton and uh, <laughs> you have to day. say it like that. You have to. Really. You have to say quit quitin, like quit quitin. Quit quit quitin. So in, it was a panel for Geek and Sundry. It was before they had their, their first official launch. And I turned to my partner, uh, who's my partner now, but back then she's just my best friend, you know, because best friends go to cons together and stuff. We've been doing conventions together for years upon years upon years the whole cosplay thing and getting our pictures taken because we're kind of narcissists sometimes, but it's okay. <laughs> I turned to her and I was like, hey, 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 we should do something like that. And then she turns to me and she's just like, okay. I don't think she took me seriously at that point because, you know, I tend to go off into weird tangents with random things. I might just be like, hey, 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 that's a really yummy pie. We should eat it right now. Okay. <laughs> I tend to get distracted by things like pie. Ooh, by I the like way, pie. there's a place here called Pie Bar that's fantastic, so when you come to Emerald City, been, it is the best place on the face of the planet, I'm sorry. Oh my god, it really is. Oh my god. They have, they have this <laughs> pie called the Derby. It's a pecan pie with chocolate and kind of whiskey-ish, and it's it's fantastic. Oh my god. Uh, I forgot, I was talking about myself, not pie, but like I said, I get distracted by pie. Tangents are good, especially when they're about pie. Pie. I love pie. Yes, pies. Pie. 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 Their apple crumble is just, I like classics, so they, they did a really, really great ap apple crumble, and I have dreams about it. Yeah. Oh, their strawberry rhubarb is still one of the best. Pie. Ooh, that sounds good. Definitely, we, we need to do a pie trip. Pie. We I'll should do it. a pie mm, podcast pie on trip. Pie Day. <gasps> just saying. I would so be down to be your guest on that. Oh. We'll bring, like... I will talk about pie, and it will be a day of pie, because <laughs> while the rest of the world can have their their cronut donut pumpkin spice pup cupcakes with, you know, PSLs or something, they can have that. The rest of the world can have that. Just give me a slice of pie. Mm, pie. <laughs> I have come to realize that deep down inside, maybe I'm a little bit Dean Winchester. Oh, that's okay. That's a good thing to be. <laughs> And it could totally be like 
a nerd ventures nerdy foodie there you go combo yep mm -hmm. yep so yeah you so after i after i've completely derailed the conversation with pie <laughs> yes it's all good it's all good continue so yeah i uh i decided to um start working on it so the initial build of liftygeek.com started going up that summer started building the website went from there and Weirdly enough, we started kind of slow, but our first con season, we we exploded. And it's weird now because we still get people, especially around our local cons, and whenever we go up to Vancouver, which we have a lot of fans up there, and even randomly sometimes in New York it happens too, um, people will come up to us and recognize the name and start saying, oh, you're a lifted geek. And I'm like, yeah, I'm the one to keep behind the camera because I put the cute girl up front. <laughs> <laughs> they meet me and then they meet some of us. And it's weird because I'm still kind of getting used to, you know, people knowing who I am because I'm just, I'm like, I'm like, you know, you like us? You like what we do? <laughs> I just want to eat pie all day and play video games. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's something to get used to, but we kind of blew up after our first convention season. It was, um, I would say that was, what was it, uh, Emerald City Comic Con 2013 was our first official convention that we unveiled ourselves as LiftedGeek.com, and the response was great. We met a lot of people, we took a lot of pictures, we didn't quite know what the hell we were doing, we still kind of don't know what the hell we're doing. Uh, we like to play everything by ear. That's kind of how we built our whole mini little empire was just being random and not really having a form. Uh, if you've ever read any of the articles on our website, the one thing about our content that we try to strive for is that everybody has a voice. We didn't want liftedgeek.com to have a liftedgeek.com voice. When you go to other websites, there's always that underlying voice that they have that is part of their brand. You read the Wall Street Journal, you read Time Magazine, you read even IGN or GameSpot, and all their writers have a very distinct voice that is very much like the website. I wanted to make all our long-form articles and short-form articles uh, characteristic of the person writing them, so that you might read a blog post by me versus a blog post by my partner or anyone else that we have writing under us, and it'll be a bit different because you get some of our character, and that's kind of where we built our our fan base from people just wanting to read about our stuff we haven't delved that far into youtube yet mostly because there's a lot of crap i want to do and i'm you know kind of lazy sometimes but um i just want to wear pajamas and eat pie but we uh we're getting out there and we're doing more things and yeah as we grow lifted geek has um i'd say now we have a we have a pretty high alexa ranking i don't know if you guys follow your alexa ranking much on on uh, Alexa.com, that kind of, it's kind of like your 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 popularity book in high school, mm -hmm. except instead of you know the sh the the she smells like potatoes and she's fat, and, <laughs> you know, she should not be wearing that dress. It's you know this website gets X amount of hits, or this website is this X amount of popular, uh, and this website is fat and smells like potatoes. And, <laughs> So our, our Alexa ranking has gone up. We have a decent amount of followers, and yeah, Lifted Geek is continually growing. And when I came across you guys, I I found something special in, in you know the whole NC world with the way that you guys approach geek culture. It's a lot like how we do, which is what drew me to you guys. Aside from the fact that you guys are instantly personable and uh, quite charismatic and the type of ladies that one must think that are the greatest ladies in geek culture. People should know who you are. So that's why I'm kind we'll of like saying We'll send you the check this week. <laughs> People should know yeah. who you are. And yeah, please send me that check. It would be so good. I can use it to buy pie. <laughs> well, if at first you don't succeed, we can dust ourselves off and try again. Yeah. We why did we get a ball? Thing, um, when, when you were saying all the lovely things that you were saying about us. I think we got all of that. Just, yeah, just keep yeah, going. Yeah, we'll keep that. Do you want saying lovely things about you? Okay, yeah, um... Go down that. Well, you ladies, go far. Are, are, you ladies are quite charismatic and charming and the type of ladies that one should know in nerd culture. I'll talk in a funny accent because it's, it, it apparently sounds more, more lovely when you say it in a funny accent. I could say it like... 
I could use my Elmo impression, but I think we might get a a C and D from Sesame Street, especially if I get really, really dirty with it. Mm. <laughs> okay, you have to do it just a little bit. <laughs> it will scare the shit out of you. I made a child cry one time. Oh no! <laughs> songs as Elmo. You totally should. That'd be hysterical. Like, <laughs> like, have you ever seen the Sad Kermit channel? No. No. There's this guy, he sing, he uses a Kermit Frog impression, and he sings really sad songs. Oh, wow. I have not heard of this, but I will Google this. You should definitely. There was, what was one that he did? He sang Hurt. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> is fun. Tis true. When life without pie is no life at Very all. depressing. Yeah. Life yes. without pie. The kind of life that I don't want to live. A life without pie. <laughs> Sounds like a true love story right there. No, it is. It's like the notebook, except you don't eat it in the rain because then you'll probably get soggy. <laughs> <laughs> that could kind of be dirty. <laughs> hey. Everyone loves, pie. Pie dirty. <laughs> Everyone loves a good wet pie. It's already dirty. Everyone loves a good wet pie. And that went there. And it went mm-hmm. there. Yes, indeed. We have just stolen the innocence away from pie. <laughs> I think American Pie did that a long time ago. Yeah, probably yeah. so. But it's been a while, you know? It has been a while. It's been a while since someone actually ruined the innocence of pie. <laughs> That should be our new goal. The yep. new goal is now to ruin the innocence of pie. <laughs> so, Jeff, what would you say is um, something that you're striving for um, in the near future with uh, Lifted Geek? Well, I guess to continue to grow and to do more things. Um, we're planning to start launching more of our YouTube content. There's a couple things that I have in the works that I'm going with. One video series I'm going to start launching soon is our. I'm taking, I'm taking the those um those subscription boxes. Yeah. Like um, I'm using two of them right now, Geek Fuel and Loot Crate. I'm being hooked up on the subscription for that, and what I'm doing is I'm pitting them against each other. Oh. So every month when I get a box, I'm going to be um, showcasing what I get in each one and assign a winner at the end of it. So, um, I'm going to do a coin flip, and you know, so that there's no bias in there. One is. Every week's going to be a different box open first because there's a chance that the first box could have a could have a you know a advantage. Sometimes the second box can have an advantage, and you just want to keep it random. Right. Uh, we do a lot of work with Espionage Cosmetics, and we'll have some new posts coming up with them too. Yes. I don't know if you guys have heard of Espionage Cosmetics. If you haven't, we you should. have. We have. We actually mm-hmm. tried to contact yeah, them for um, an interview. 
So, well, you know, I can make that happen. <gasps> could you? That would be I amazing. That would be I can make that. Easy. I can make it happen because those are my girls. I love my <laughs> girls. Yeah, we met them. We met them at Carnival. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you met the head of the company. Did you meet Jamie? I don't think we met Jamie. No, I think she was um, she was uh, doing um, a panel or something, something like that. So they've blown up big since you know we first came across them back in back right around when Lift the Geek started. They were starting up too. We helped them promote their Nailed It campaign, which was their nail wraps that they sell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we helped promote them. And ever since that, uh, we kind of helped get their Kickstarter funded, and they've been on our side ever since. They started a new um, subscription box service too. It's called Boombox. Yeah. Uh, I get you links down for the show notes and whatever later. But um, cool. They're trying to uh, to promote that for you know nerdy, geeky, fashionable gals, I guess. But we'll be running some new videos with um, my partner running a couple um, box reviews of the subscription. So we're gonna have a couple months worth of of the Boombox to kind of showcase and. Uh, and show on the website, show people what's in it. Should be fun. And let's see, that's in this pipeline. Um, con season's uh, in the throw, so we're trying to get uh, the rest of our um, conventions in order for the next uh, year, I'd say. Our um, the first con of the year is most likely going to be Emerald City Comic Con. Nice. We like to take a decent amount of, of break between... November and you know the next spring con season mostly because once March hits every month or twice a month there's always some kind of event we have to go to or do some coverage for so it gets really busy. Right. We'll be there covering as press again. We'll be uh, aiming for San Diego again as usual. Mm -hmm. Uh, New York's always on the list although I didn't go last year because you know apparently you need money for doing things. Right. Yeah. I can't just stow away on a boat or something, and I just realized it, it might be kind of difficult to take a boat from Seattle to New York. Maybe. I didn't want, to, didn't want to stow away on a plane because I keep on thinking about that one scene from Con Air and Dave Chappelle stuck in the thing. <laughs> landing gears. Yeah. I don't want to be Dave Chappelle stuck in the landing gears. That might be really awkward. <laughs> Probably not a good idea. Probably not a good idea. Yeah. So it's mostly just cons, uh, showcasing new content. Um, all the people that we work with are going to be showcased in the coming year. Um, a buddy of mine, Colin, he started a um, movement called CrossFit, and he had to recently change his um, change his trademark because he was getting sued by CrossFit. CrossFit is basically it's cosplay fitness is what it stood for, and um, he would he's a he's a uh, a trained personal trainer. Uh, and, or certified personal trainer, and he develops workouts uh, for people to be the superhero they want to be. So, in other words, if you want to cosplay as Superman, and you know, not look like your drunk uncle on Halloween, <laughs> you can totally follow these these uh, these workouts. He um, he does not just just physical workouts, but also diet. And in the new year, we're planning to start running a. I guess a kind of weekly series where I do the workouts and I get my ass kicked by him. Nice. Which is great because it's on one thing. I can finally stop being a fat ass because, uh, bye. And second, I can showcase his workouts and trying to get him out there because he's just he's just a really cool dude. He's got a fantastic uh, product that he's trying to promote. So yeah, <laughs> oh, CrossFit. Dear. You guys should look him up. He had to change his name to Cosplay Fitness, so we can still call him CrossFit, but we can't officially call him CrossFit. Right. So he's now Cosplay Fitness on Facebook, and he's a cool dude, and we're going to start doing some work with him. Will he be having some um, workouts for the ladies as well? Yeah, that's one thing that he's trying to work on. He's uh, He's got a lot of workouts there that, that can be used for ladies too as well. Okay, cool. um, he's done some, I think he, I remember he did like the Wonder Woman workout, and most of it is just images that he posts up on his website where he kind of shows the kind of workouts you should do. But hopefully, as we start partnering with him, because he doesn't have that big of a um, team at the moment, we want to be able to showcase, um, you know, different workouts for the men and the ladies as well. Because everyone should learn to feel, or should be able to learn to feel like a superhero, or at least, you know, get your ass kicked by a workout routine. Right. Which is also fun. <laughs> um, I actually wanted to talk about your, um, shall we say, mentors. 
Um, when I spoke, when we had our phone conversation, you had mentioned um, Chris Hardwick having been uh, a big influence and uh, the Quill Hleason. And, I'm sorry, who who was that again, Ronnie? <laughs> <laughs> who, Shut who, up. Who are you talking about? Why are you trying to break me? <laughs> we need to keep this going. So the Quill Wheaton and the Chris Hardwick, those are two of my... Uh, I would, I would consider them like mentors and stuff in, in nerd culture, even though I've only met them briefly a couple times. Um, I could I could take a, a, a webcam video like the like the Lamborghini guy. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen his thing. He's like, you know, I'm up in the Hollywood Hills with my new Lamborghini here. Something something something. I had mentors or some crap. The guy's a douchebag. But <laughs> <laughs> anyways, I have, I have my nerdy mentors that uh, that I've looked up to over the years. Um, Chris Hardwick's one of my main ones because I've been I've known of him and known who he was ever since the days of Singled Out. If anyone watched that when they were younger and yep. weren't supposed to, yep. it was a really bad dating show on MTV with Jenny McCarthy and Chris Hardwick as the host. And uh, then when he transitioned over to G4, I used to watch him on Gadget Braun and I've been following him ever since he started Nerdist, which seemed like the, it had such a meteoric rise within a year, which was, you know, I guess helped by the fact that he was always on TV and always moderating at conventions. Um, one other person who I actually look up to a lot that um, that I've uh, been able to uh, to call a friend to is uh, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever met Tony Kim. He is um, he's widely known in the Comic Con scene. Um, he goes by Tony B Kim. He is at Crazy for Comic Con on Twitter. So he's I call him Mister San Diego Comic Con because you can't be at Comic Con without seeing him. I've been following his blog since I first started going to Comic-Con, really, and kind of following what he does. He's great with giving out tips for newbies that want to go to the con. Uh, I guess one other major um, major uh, mentor to me and inspiration to me as uh, Lifted Geek is IGN.com and their website. Of all the gaming publications out there, I uh, mostly read IGN and have been reading them for years. A couple of my favorite personalities from from the website that I still follow now is like for example Greg Miller who ended up leaving recently and started his own uh, group kind of funny on YouTube along with uh, uh, with Colin Moriarty and a few other guys that were part of IGN back in their heyday uh, they're always a hoot to be around and I've met them a couple times and every single time I see them I just want to give them a big old high five and of course, Zach Levi, who you guys are quite familiar with. Not only does he have the most pinchable cheeks you can ever, ever see. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, have you tested this theory out? I wanted to, but I don't think he'd want me to grab his ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you should say that. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a picture when they were doing the Heroes Reborn um, experience. Um, the gigantic picture of Zachary Levi. There's a picture yep. of me grabbing his ass. Yes. That should be put in the show notes as well. It should. <laughs> Indeed. And everything he does with Nerd Machine is is such a testament to what geek culture is because I wanted to showcase that um, that nerd culture isn't what it was back in the old days. It's not it's not the stereotypical Steve Urkel looking Hi guys, do you have any cheese? That was bad. That was really bad. Cheese? I love cheese. Cheese is awesome. Me too. Cheese and a slice of pie. This is why I'm never going to have a six pack because (laughs) um, because cheese and pie. We need cheese and pie. pie. Life is too short and not. Life is too short not to have. I made. I once made a really good pie one time. It was a savory pie. So kind of like a meat pie, except on the inside instead of putting meat, I put mac and cheese with bacon. Oh, dude. Seriously. Oh, and I bake. That's probably another random thing. I like baking. Oh. Okay. I bake and I cook. Can you make it a resident baker? Ooh. That's right. Yep. She's, she's our foodie girl. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I taste test everything. <laughs> Pretty much. As you should. Why would you cook something and not taste test it? Exactly. 
That's why, you know, if you make a pie for somebody, you have to make a whole separate pie for yourself. <laughs> Just try to make sure it's good. <laughs> yeah, as we as we grow and as we continue growing, the I guess the one thing that's kind of stayed constant is that we're always trying to uplift geek culture, which is kind of behind the name. Right. We called it Lifted Geek because we wanted to uplift geek culture and show that, you know, the typical geek from old movies and if you go into, like, any any like image uh, search engine like Shutterstock or even Google Images and you type the word geek, a lot of the images you're going to see are archaic characters of of what a geek was back in like the 90s. Mm -hmm. Which isn't the same because now those 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 uh, characters are iconic hipsters nowadays because that's kind of what hipsters look like. Yeah, typical geek. You don't have to be, you don't have to be like a basement dweller to be a typical geek. I mean, there's there are geeks like that. There's geeks amongst all types. There's social geeks. There's antisocial geeks. And it's just kind of a, you're just somebody. I mean, you're a geek about somebody uh, or anything. If you like cars, you're a geek about cars. If you like sports, you're a geek about sports. If you play fantasy football, you're basically playing Dungeons and Dragons. Right. So as we uplift it, I mean, the whole idea is to, is to um, show that uh, yeah, pretty much you can, be any, you can be anything and just still be a geek about something. That's kind of what I saw through um, through all these these inspirations and the people that that uh, are doing it in nerd culture, like the Chris Hardwicks and the Felicia Days and the Zachary Levi's Butt and the Will Wheatons of the world. They're showing that that not everyone has to has to be some antisocial basement dweller to be a geek. So um, usually in our in our questionnaires. Um, our very first question is just that, your definition of a nerd, would you say that pretty much defines nerd for you, similarly to geek? I would say so, yeah. I mean, if you nerd out about, over something, you geek out over something, you're pretty much, you're someone that likes something so much that you want to tell the world about it. You're a nerd, you're a geek, you're, you just really, really like something. And I guess... You know, the typical nerd, the typical geek is like the sci-fi nerd, the Star Wars nerd, the I like Lord of the Rings or, you know, video games and stuff. But, you know, you can nerd out over anything. So as long as you are really passionate about something, you're a nerd one way or another. So to continue on with our little nerdy questionnaire, let's see. If you could vacation in any fantasy, literary, television, film realm, where would you go and why? I'd go to the Matrix so that I can jump over buildings and... Just be like, whoa! <laughs> I'll just, I'll just, I'll just look at things and be like, whoa! <laughs> I, I, I know kung fu. I'll have to squint. I'll really squint to do that. Really cool I'll have to be like, I'll be like, like, whoa! <laughs> I know I'm getting like super squintier than a typical Asian can get. I'm practically sleeping now. <laughs> I like, I like pick like the blue pill and stuff, and now, uh, uh, I think I know Kung Fu, <laughs> and I can jump over buildings and stop bullets with my hand. I think I'd want a vacation in the Matrix mostly so that I can, you know, use that voice everywhere because it's, it makes me smile a little bit inside. <laughs> Let's see, if you were gifted with a personal TARDIS, what point in time would you travel to first? Ooh, that's good, actually. Hmm. If I was gifted with a personal TARDIS, I... Well, if I had to pick an actual fixed point in time, I would go to the Titanic just so that I can be Jack. Right? I'll find some really, really rich lady and dress up like some kind of, you know, vagabond or something. And I will reenact every scene from the Titanic as Jack. Like, hi... Jack. Jack Dawson. I know I look kind of Asian, but I think I was adopted. And then I will... <laughs> I'll look for someone named Rose, and I'll be like, Rose! Ro Rose! Or something like that. And I'll reenact every scene of the Titanic, all the way to the point of, you know, like, you know, like, never let go! And then as I let myself go and go underwater, I'll jump into TARDIS and, you know, have a spa day. <laughs> oh no, we've lost ourselves again. We yeah? have? No, we not. I'm back. Ha ha. Okay. <laughs> you guys were like frozen for a second, just like you know Jack was at the end of Titanic. Well, so I would, I would go. 
Hey, that movie's been out Major for like most spoiler. <laughs> Did you know that Anakin Skywalker becomes Darth Vader? Oh, my heart, <laughs> Did you know Luke Skywalker is Darth Vader's son? Hashtag spoilers. No! My hand just got cut off. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> just kidding. Oh yeah! <laughs> um, okay, I would go to talks. Titanic and I would reenact every scene from Titanic, and I think maybe I would I would do the the um, flying Jack scene just because it's it's iconic and it's like, I just yeah you kind of have to you kind of have to you know and you know. Of course, at the end of it, fly back in my TARDIS and, you know, go back down when she drops her giant jewel and pick it up as she drops it <laughs> onto the ocean. Because I'm like, damn, girl, you crazy. That jewel's expensive. <laughs> you know how much pie you can buy with that jewel? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> That's a big-ass jewel. I like how you went ghetto for a second there. <laughs> old lady straight cray. Old lady straight cray. Drop a jewel in the ocean. <laughs> I could buy pie with that jewel. Expensive. Expensive joke. <laughs> okay, so what is your favorite made up word? My favorite made up word well there's two favorite made up words. Um um my first favorite made up word is douchebaggery. <laughs> <laughs> I like that word too. It's a verb used in the sense of someone acting as if they are a douchebag and all their actions can only be described by one phrase. Douchebaggery. My second favorite made-up word is what the fuckery. <laughs> Use in a sentence. Matt went online and committed a bunch of what the fuckery and made himself look like a douchebag as he propensinated his douchebaggery. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the so douchebaggery like and what the fuckery are two of my favorites. An, an adjective, not a verb. No, it's it's an it's an adjective. Being a douchebag is an adjective. You're describing him. But douchebaggery is the activity of being a douchebag. So that's a noun. It's an adverb. Oh, yeah, noun. I, uh, words are hard. Words are hard. <laughs> words. Words, are <laughs> words are hard, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. What is your real life superpower? My real life superpower? Well, I guess one of my real life superpowers is Jedi mind tricking people into doing things they wouldn't normally do. Mostly because. Uh, I guess I'm good at it? So is you're it? telling me that you're Kilgrave? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, I'm Kilgrave. Okay. Good to know. Hi. I'm Kilgrave. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> got. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, my day job, I work in marketing, so marketing is pretty much, um, glorified sales. So, working in marketing, you have to have the silver tongue, or I could be like anyone from from Fallout who decides to give themselves a charisma stat of nine or above, and that's me, just going through every speech check and just making people do what I want. I'll take a third cap from you. <laughs> Speaking about Fallout, who's playing Fallout? My husband. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> have you had the mornings, doesn't he? What? It's work. He is not home yet. I think he got lost at the store. Well, no, I mean when he plays, he usually oh. plays in the morning. Yeah. Have you have you thought of traipsing around in a in a pretty little number and seeing if you know that'll pull him away from Fallout because that probably wouldn't work, but it might be fun. It wouldn't. <laughs> no, it wouldn't work. Anyway, <laughs> Fallout is consuming many a player's lives, and it's just consumed my life. In many ways. The struggle is real. I have, logged, I have logged six days worth of gameplay time. Wow. Over the span of two playthroughs. And I'm planning to hop in a third time so I can do a third playthrough. Because when I get obsessed about something, I get obsessed. <laughs> this is also why I'm fat. There's a couple of things that, you know, the reason why I'm fat. Um, you know, top ten reasons why I'm fat. Reason number one, pie. Reason number two, Fallout. Reason number three, Mac and Cheese. 
Reason number four, all things cheese. Reason number five, <laughs> cheeseburgers, because cheeseburgers are fucking fantastic. <laughs> Reason number six, milkshakes, because you can't not have a cheeseburger and, you know, you, know, you can't have you can't not have a milkshake with your cheeseburger. Right. And I lost track of what number I'm at, so we'll just call it good at that, but there's a lot of reasons why I'm fat. What about bacon? Bacon actually doesn't really make you fat. Bread makes it you clogs fat. your arteries, doesn't mm. make you fat. Yeah, it just clogs your arteries. It'll kill you, but it won't make you fat. Interesting. Okay, my dear, so final question. Ooh, final countdown. How do you want to be remembered? How do I want to be remembered? Hmm. I guess if I wanted to be remembered as anything, I just want to be remembered like a pillar. I mean, I could say I'm a pillar of geek culture, but no, I mean actually like a pillar, pillar, just like a stone rod. <laughs> Maybe we could write my initials on it. It'll be like, you know, XOXO, JP. <laughs> a giant stone rod that says JP. Yes. That's enough for me to be remembered because, <laughs> because life and what you do with it is is just a collection of everything that you've done. And when it all comes down to it, the, the people that remember you the most are the people that are close to you and the people that felt close to you. So for them, you don't need a statue or a shrine or anything grandiose. Sometimes all you need is a pillar with your initials on it and XOXO. That's cute. I like that. It means you're holding up a building. Yep. You're holding up the weight of something on your shoulders, but you're That's just a giant actually really problem. deep. It is, isn't it? I did go pretty deep there. Wow. That's what <laughs> that she was said. my anti-Kiana moment. <laughs> hey, no hating on Keanu. He's, we, we've adopted him as Canadian, okay? Are you going to go opening night? I was going to, but uh, I'm sending someone else to do the coverage for it. Um, I What am I doing that weekend? I think that weekend I got like... Christmas party crap to do because it's during December and, you know, apparently you're supposed to be with family or some shit. Right. <laughs> so I'm probably going to go see it at, um, um, the, w the week after. Um, I'm aiming for Tuesday because there's a theater up here that does, uh, $6 movies on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a Cinnabar. So not only can I, can I watch a movie, I can drink beers while I'm watching the movie. Well, you got me all excited. I thought it was cinnamon buns and liquor. That's what I thought, too. <laughs> it would be great if they had cinnamon buns there. I mean, I was looking at their menu, and I was thinking to myself, you guys really missed a chance here not getting cinnamon buns. Cinnamon buns would be For great sure. at Cinnabar. But I think they meant it more like Cine, like Cinnabar. Right. Maybe they want, they want me to say it like that. Welcome to Cinnabar. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm probably going to get nice and toasty and buzzed and watch Star Wars. Nice. And Maybe be a dick and be all like, did you know Anakin Skywalker was Darth Vader? I used to do that. I remember I did that when I watched episode two back in the day uh, with my friends. We were in the theater and we were just like, you know, vamping off each other. And I was just all like, did you know Anakin Skywalker is Darth Vader? And then we just go saying things that are normally, you know, Truths so that you know of Star Wars already. We thought it was hilarious. <laughs> we were probably being really fucking annoying. <laughs> but then again, that was episode two. How old was I back then? I was young. Jeez, I'm old. You're not that old, dude. I am old. <laughs> we are exactly the same age, so... <laughs> so therefore you're calling Ronnie old. Exactly, It's yeah. just not cool. <laughs> That's just rude, Justin. <laughs> if you don't look old, be happy about that. You don't either. You're Asian, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to look like this for years. I'm going to be like this for the next 70 years. I'm like, you I'm like 80 and then boom, you're old. <laughs> yeah, it happens overnight. Very Which true. is why you've never seen a middle-aged Asian person. You either see a young-looking Asian person or a really old Asian person. Exactly. Is it 80? It's like, where does it happen? No, it happens between yeah. 50 and 60. Yeah. No, no, you guys froze again. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh -oh. oh, we lost uh -oh. him. Did we lose you? Oh. Yeah, yeah. call dropped. The, the, the head keeps popping in and out of frame, Ronnie. Really? <laughs> the, the head. Really? Yes. <laughs> Rachel, oh. is that you? Hi, Rich! Hi! <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, you d- you haven't written about Fallout, right? No. Okay, because Jess was thinking about doing a little guest posting about Fallout. That'd be cool. So yes, my dear, whenever you want, mm-hmm. you can... Oh, post. I'm looking at yes. your guys' page right now, and there's that picture of the crew all up in... What is this, Disney Steampunk or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we felt like celebrities for a day. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> kept getting stopped and stuff. <laughs> It was pretty. So many cute little children. <laughs> oh my god, it's Jasmine! It's Minnie! <laughs> Something my fave was when um that little girl came up to Shaolin. Oh god, yeah. Oh I my god, so it's Ariel! I'm so glad we had the sunglasses, because I totally cried. Mm-hmm. I totally Falling. I had to remind yeah. Laura, I was like, Laura's like, Michelle, I'm like, no, Ariel! Ariel! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Keep it up for the little girl! <laughs> Don't ruin it. Oh, that's cute. That's a dog's. I can walk around conventions dressed up like Mickey and, you know, use my Mickey voice and try very hard not to ruin children's childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Mickey, Mickey Mouse. It's less terrifying than the Elmo voice. Uh, yeah, I think so. I must agree. Well, I think it is a bit less terrifying than the Elmo voice, but, um... Maybe if I was really, really drunk, it might ruin the childhood of some children. <laughs> it might yeah. be like, like, oh my god, I'm drunk Mickey and, oh, fuck this place and Disney and all their shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who I am? I'm the king. I, I am the, I am the king of the magical fucking kingdom and <laughs> I get no respect. I'm a mouse. <laughs> and look at that, that jackass Roger Rabbit and his shit. Oh, when they drew my girl, they pretty much just cloned me and put a fucking bow on her head. <laughs> Roger Rabbit? He gets Jessica Rabbit? Where's the fairness in that? <laughs> can tell. <laughs> or I could dress up like Aladdin and just like, you know, run around, you know, going up to random girls and just saying, do you trust me? <laughs> <laughs> like, that would be less creepier. <laughs> it would be less creepier. It's like, do you trust me? I foresee a lot of restraining orders. <laughs> <laughs> they pull just me- a lot of restraining orders. They pull me away and arrest me, and I'm just like yelling, I just wanted to show you a whole new world! I just wanted to show you a whole new world! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> sides hurt. <laughs> Sheets hurt. Before this starts tumbling further. <laughs> I, tend to, I tend to infect people with that. Who needs exercise when you have Justin to make you laugh? Exactly. Who needs exercise when I can just make you laugh out of every orifice of your body? <laughs> orifice. Oh. Orifice. It's like laughter diarrhea. <laughs> I'm making everyone laughter shark. <laughs> What? So, in closing, <laughs> Devil. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Um, James, do you want to do the outro? <laughs> um, it's been something. <laughs> That's a good word to put. It's been weird and funny and inappropriate, and we're very grateful that you were here today. (laughs) It's great to be here and just... 
be as random, as amazing as I can be, because sometimes you just want to be weird, <laughs> you know? But in all seriousness, we really do appreciate the support that you have given us. Aww. And the guidance. Aww. My heart. <laughs> the sweet stuff that you said earlier about us, that was much appreciated as well. Yes, we, we will definitely keep that part. <laughs> Please keep that part. You can feel free to cut down as much of my weirdness as possible to keep it flowing. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> it really isn't. All of a sudden, it's going to be like, okay, you have an hour and a half of content, it cuts down to like three seconds. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the edition of Ner Nerds Are Us. This is our guest, Justin. Alright, that's what I'm talking about. That's, 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 that's all we got, folks. <laughs> Bye. TLDR. See you next time. <laughs> TLDR. Uh, inappropriate Elmo, Drunk Mickey, and Keanu Reeves is dumb. <laughs> hey, leave Keanu out of this. <laughs> yeah. But he makes it so easy. <laughs> hey, Justin. I should feel bad. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> <laughs> if you could send me, um, like, three or four photos that you'd like us to use for the post, and... Oh, no! Oh, oh, he's yeah, gone. Yeah. Oh, my God. He just, just texted to him. <laughs> It was fun. Bye, everybody. Yeah, it was fun. Bye. Bye. After quite a bit of technical difficulties, we want to thank Justin again for joining us. And please be sure to check out liftedgeek.com and give them a like on Facebook and Twitter. We'll have all the links below and on our blog. Stay nerdy, friends.